Okay, so someone asked me to do a bit of a vlog of all my pets, like when I feed them, clean them out and so on, like sort of in a day, a uh, vlog in a day. So, what I'm doing is I'm starting actually in the night time, it is currently quarter past one in the morning, and what I'm doing is feeding all my geckos, and this also uh, coincides with cleaning out their poo. I tend to clean out their poo more often than their food, but as it's happening both today, I figured it would be the best time to film. So what I do when cleaning out their poo, if you really care, is they each have a plastic spoon. <laughs> and obviously it's got Dion for Diego. Now, by the time you scoop out their poop, it's not going to be like wet or anything disgusting. So usually this is, as you can see, it's completely clean. Um, so, with Diego, he's a bit of a tricky gecko. What he tends to do, if you really want to know this stuff, is he has a rock house at the back, and instead of just going in a clean, open area to go to the loo, he climbs to the top of that, and he poos down the side. So that would be fun to take out. So that's basically what I'm going to do for all four of my geckos. I'm probably not going to film that because it's kind of disgusting, and, like, I, I just... I don't know why you'd want to see that, <laughs> so I'll be back when I'm going to feed them. Okay, now that job's done, we're going to give them all fresh water. Now, if you're more interested in my other pets, so my guinea pig, my chinchilla, or my crested gecko, and you just want to skip to that, then there are time bits in the description, so you can click on them and go straight to the part. If you're just interested in it all, just sit back, relax, we'll go through this all. Also, I'm always asked whether I do anything special with the water. All I do and all I've ever done is got like a glass full of water and left it out for at least 24 hours. Um, you can use all different stuff to get rid of the chlorine and so on. Um, yeah, you could do that, that's totally up to you. But yeah, I just use uh, some normal water. Okay, on today's menu we have cricket. Now, a really big tip I can give you is write down when you feed your geckos. So, I've always done this since Gizmo's Little and for some reason I've kept all those pieces of paper. So, <laughs> I can literally look back at, if there was a sudden weight change, I can look back at the details of when I fed her and if there's anything weird with her feeding and so on. I don't know why I keep it all, but I do. So. What's really good about this as well is, say I feed them crickets with calcium, I'll write down a C. If I put crickets with multivitamins, I'll put MV. Uh, dubia roaches will be DU. Waxworms will just be wax, and millworms will just be mill. So, um, that's what I do. And a good thing is, I can look back, and last time they ate, they had calcium. So, they've had calcium the last two feeds so now I'm going to give them multivitamins. Now a way I usually dust the crickets is to put the powder in a bag and the crickets in a bag and just shake it around but I don't actually have a bag for the multivitamins at the moment. It's just a normal plastic bag but I don't have one with me so another thing you can do is empty a bit of powder in the bottom. Choose your crickets, I'll just show you right now. So this is going to be for Diego and I like to feed Diego the ones with wings because these are almost always male and they're the ones that chirp because the wings go together like that and make a chirp sound so to stop that happening so much Diego eats them because they are the biggest as well and he's the biggest so just collect he's gonna have eight today so I'm just gonna do that so I've got all eight in here just going to shake them around a bit. You want to put your hand over the top because if you shake this around with cricket, it's going to get out. So shake it around to dust it all off. Okay, so as you may know, Minnie is a bit of a different 
leopard gecko because she was I always say born but I mean hatched with a dodgy eye so basically her other eye the eyelid actually turns inwards so it's not the best eye so sometimes she has problems with hunting and I've sat here before and had to sit for 45 minutes to an hour just to feed her a few crickets um, so sometimes it can be really difficult but lately she has been going crazy for crickets so hopefully whilst I'm filming you'll see that today there you go. See, how does she even do that with such a dodgy eye? She's so good. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got her quite a few crickets. I think I've got her like six or seven, so she has a few to go. Okay, so that is the feeding done and I did say I was going to give a shout out to anyone? Say let's see who has wrote, oh god I got a few okay um so a shout out to Brook Park Exotic Menagerie which I believe that's Josie Chance133 Juan6902 Cuttlebooper, <laughs> Cuttlebooper, what a name is that? Cuttlebooper hello Cuttlebooper um, T.Y. Pryor, Jack Quinnan, I, I hope I'm pronouncing these right, I'm very sorry if I'm not, Brody WWW, no, two W's, oh dear me, WW, okay, Killer B 532 oh, Fandoms Are United, okay, sorry if there was a bit of a cut, my memory actually just went on my memory card, um, okay, where was I, um, Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah 91021, J. Silori, I am so sorry if I'm pronouncing these wrong. J. Silori, oh my goodness, why can't I? You know, to be fair, it's two in the morning here, so. Hello, hello. Guinea Pig Pixels, it's Caitlin, oh my god. So, hi to you guys, I promise to shout out. Oh, and Mitch Tracy, you just got in there. I just wrote all done, so 34 seconds ago, you just got in there. Now it's time to feed Isla, so I'm going to give her Rapashi. I'm, I've actually got Pangea at the moment. Uh, I haven't started using it, I'm actually going to transition her from this to the Pangea and sort of see her reaction. I've heard that Crested Geckos actually really like it, so hopefully she does because I'm coming to the end of my Rapashi, you can't really see. But I've had it uh, nearly a year now. It cost me 15 quid when I first got it. So £15 over a year is actually quite good for uh, food expenses for a reptile. My only problem with Rapashi, and I don't know if this is any different to Pangea, but a lot of it gets wasted because it dries out quite quickly. So when I first try to make it up, I try to make it up a little bit runny because I think by the time she gets to it, it would have probably dried out a little bit. So my battery light is flashing so I really don't have too much time. But that's what I mean by Rapashi being wasted. She obviously is eating it but there's just so much wasted. So I need to put that in. I need to take an apple out because I did leave her with a little bit of apple to see what she'd think of it. Now I'm just going to spray down her tank. And all of this has taken me just over an hour. You can actually feed your geckos like after like 7 o'clock in the evening. You don't have to be this late. It's just I usually feed them just before I go to bed. So that's why I'm so late. Okay, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, it's now the next day and I am going to clean out Pee Wee. As you can tell, rodents go to the loo a lot so um, there's a lot to clean out. It's only been a few days and unfortunately where it's been raining this has also got wet and mucky. This is the balcony and stairs that me and my dad actually made for Pee Wee because he wasn't coming out of his chicken coop. I think because the stairs are way too steep so yeah we made this and he seems to like it and the other day I also made him a little like curtains for this I don't know I had some spare materials so this is the egg laying area I actually made this hay rack so you can eat it through here and um, I actually made this so if you fold a newspaper 
in half. It fits perfectly in here. And I have to fill up some more hay. It's actually quite a lot. Baby! He'll probably come up here soon, but yeah, got to clean him out now. Now it's all nice and clean. If you saw my guinea pig haul, you'll see I got a quite a long bed. That fits perfectly over there, so that's where that will be going. What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? This I have to really recommend. If you're getting a guinea pig and there's one essential, and it seems such a bizarre one, but it's this. It's a bottle cover because I was having loads of problems with like green um, coming up in the bottles. As soon as I pop one of these on, haven't had any trouble with it throughout winter and summer. Because uh, I got one for my chinchilla first, and so now I've got one for Pee Wee. Yeah! Oh yeah, and by the way, I probably won't film feeding him later on this afternoon. Uh, that'll be his like tea time, only because I have a friend coming around, I don't really want to pull out my camera just to film feeding Pee Wee and my chinchilla, so... Um, and also I think this vlog will probably going on too long so right now he's just having the leftovers from tea we had some see this is the other thing does anyone else get this uh, can you pick I don't think he poos in it but I think sometimes he gets poo on his foot and then puts it in the bowl if you want a rodent in, uh, like in any way they go to the loo a lot and I feel like this vlog has far too much fecal matter than the average vlog <laughs> but that's what you get when you have pets. Next is Ruby. Once again, she's a rodent. There's a lot of poop. It's just kind of what happens. She is currently up in a hammock with her little toy. Um, after Lola died, I got her a little toy. Like, that's the first thing I got because I thought, you know, naturally they snuggle up to each other and she'd be missing that. So I got her a little grey toy and sort of every day she goes and sleeps on it in the hammock. It's so cute. But yeah, she needs cleaning out as well today. I'm pretty sure after this video a lot of people ask me, out of all the pets, what's the easiest to look after? And you'll see the fluffy pets like little Ruby here and Pee Wee and they're all cute and everything but I would say in terms of cleaning out and food they are definitely the biggest things to look after because uh, you have to clean them out every few days and with food, uh, the chinchilla is not too bad, but the guinea pig, where you have to buy fruit and vegetable and everything, that is very expensive after a while. Out of all my animals, a chinchilla is most definitely the most difficult pet I've ever had. Because they need so much exercise and interaction, and um, they can't get too hot, because they can die, they can't sweat, nor can guinea pigs, and Ruby is out. <laughs> um, so that's, they're definitely difficult. One thing I will say is don't just get a pet just because um, oh it's e like it's easy or you have the room so you're like mm, what can I fit in a no she goes in like a two foot tank or something say or something like that because I think you've got to really really want a pet because say you get something like this you're gonna have to really want it if you um, are gonna clean out hundreds of thousands of poops every few days seriously what are you doing Ruby come here. Come here. So, it, it, you shouldn't get a pet just out of necessity. You should get it out of actually really wanting it and being passionate about it. A quick fact about chinchillas. So, a good thing is their fur is so dense. They, she's come out again. Their fur is so dense that they can't actually get fleas. Uh, but one problem I found, and she's, you see her there. When her and her sister used to live in my room, um, I actually lost my sense of smell. So, all the fur and um, sand baths and all of that soon built up in the air and I was clearly breathing it in. And I had so many like sinus problems and stuff for ages. And eventually, 
I lost my sense of smell. It is sometimes there, it sometimes comes back, but it's definitely not what it used to be. So that's a definite risk. And when I first researched about them, everyone said they didn't smell. And so I was feeling pretty happy with that. And I, <laughs> I don't know if people just get used to the smell or it's just my chinchillas, but they do smell. Like I, when I got these, I got them from a place where they rescue them. And they also breed them as well, but and they said, oh no, they don't smell. Well, this house probably had like a hundred chinchillas in, and trust me, it did smell. But I think you do get used to it, the smell, so that might be why people say it. But um, but yeah, so that is definitely one of the lasting effects of having a chinchilla for me. And if you're wondering where the tray's gone, it's because I'm... I've taken it out. This is a really good thing about this cage, is all the poo drops down. So it goes into a tray, but right now I need to sweep under this even more, because some of it's falling out. Great. And this is a massive bag of bedding from one chinchilla and one guinea pig. So there's a lot to be cleaned. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. As I said, it contained far too much poop. But anyway, that's the reality of having pets. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.